Thank, thank you so you much so for joining much. me. Thank you so much for having me. How are you doing me. today? I'm great, thank you. Now, as I was reading your bio, something stuck out immediately. You went to Kingston University yes. and I lived in Surbiton for quite oh, a long amount of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so basically where she went to university in the UK is about five minutes away from where I used to live when I was in the UK. That's really exciting. I know. But what's more exciting is the fact that Nigeria's real estate industry will not stop booming. Yes. Tell me all about it. Well, okay, so the Nigerian real estate market is in a very um, interesting place right now. Um, out of all the sectors that were hit by the 2017 recession, the real estate market is the slowest one to recover. And as most people know, we have a 17 million unit deficit, which um, everyone is trying to figure out how can we, you know, solve this deficit problem. Uh, there are three ways that we can go about that, which is obviously by the federal and government state budgets. Um, property developers, so private investment and foreign direct investment. Now, unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of ups and downs with all these three areas, especially mm -hmm. in terms of affordable housing. Um, a lot of developers don't want to do affordable housing because it doesn't really make financial and commercial sense for them. They make more money with the high end properties, which is why we see an oversupply of unaffordable accommodation, which increases vacancy rates and um, a lot of affordable housing, um, just no availability with affordable housing, basically. But why does it have to be that way? Does it all boil down to Nigeria's current economy? Because let's say as a young woman, yes. I wanted to buy or invest rather in my first house, I'd have so many challenges. The mm -hmm. first one being interest rates. Where am I gonna yes. get like a loan? Or Definitely. Let's even start with that. How yeah. does that affect people, especially young people from buying and obtaining property? Okay, so like rightly said, the mortgages in Nigeria right now are very poor and actually they account for about 3% of housing finance. Mortgage rates are about over 25%. They're ridiculous in Nigeria. So for millennials like us and even generations below, it's almost impossible for us to break the cycle of renting and actually get on the property ladder. I mean, to find anything worthwhile, you're looking at at least 70 million naira to get on. And that's across. That's not just on the island. That's on the mainland too wow. for a proper home. So for millennials, we are finding it very difficult. There are a lot of government schemes being introduced. There is the um, rent to buy scheme and they're also trying to improve ways to reduce the interest rates but these all are in their very early stages so unfortunately it's not looking great for our generation in terms of getting on the property ladder um, however with the economy starting to come out of recession at least we can afford to even rent properties whereas before it was a struggle across the board that makes a lot of sense what is the value though of owning land like in Nigeria we're also keen on owning land yes. you know you find people just saying I just I want to go and buy land I yes. need to buy land what is the value of land in Nigeria today okay so obviously land value is I mean like you said everybody wants to own land it's very very valuable um, what you see is places like, for example, Lekki, which uh, once upon a time was very undesirable. People looked down on Lekki, they didn't want to buy in Lekki. All of a sudden, there's a, a sudden boom in yeah. the Lekki market. And now, people can't even readily buy land in Lekki because it's not as affordable as it was because the, the value goes up. So, um, unlike real estate, which is easily uh, affected by a recession, land values usually stay quite stable and increase over time. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to backtrack, Joanna. Let's okay. start off with basic questions, or okay. let's go halfway with basic questions. Okay. <laughs> um, what should people look for when wanting to buy a property? Okay, so for people who are wanting to get on the property ladder, they need to look for emerging locations. So if you're trying to find, you know, your first apartment, or you're finally like leaving the rent, uh, the rent, the rent industry, and trying to get on the property ladder, don't go for the most obvious locations: your VI, your Lekki, your Ikoyi or other areas. Try and find emerging locations. As I said, Lekki was once an emerging, emerging location and people who bought land many years ago or 10, 20 years ago are now reaping the benefits. Yeah. So now you have areas along the Le Lekki Epe Expressway which are forecast to increase incredibly in value. So as a young person, don't put yourself under this unrealistic um, pressure of living in these pri um, prime locations. Look for emerging locations also on the mainland and you know, start there. Um, when you buy somewhere, uh, when you buy land in a, an emerging market, your value and your uh, return on investment is going to be much more than somewhere in a prime location, especially and I if guess you're starting out. Yeah, and one big problem that we probably have in Lagos is the fact that Lagos in itself is already overpopulated. Of course, is yeah. that what you would say is also affecting the um, 
what's the word I was going to find? The supply of the supply. Houses. Um, okay, so to me, the issue with Lagos, as I said, is that majority of the housing that is introduced, okay, the World Bank said that Nigeria needs 700,000 units a year, right, to be able to address the housing deficit. 700,000 700, units? 700,000. Okay, now, let's take a landscape. Give me an example. Where in Nigeria, like, give me an area that's about that. About 700,000 units? Yeah. I couldn't even tell you because Lagos is trying to produce, I think, 25,000 in five years. So I can't even imagine 700,000. Okay, so that's a big amount of the entire yeah. country. But to put it in context for you, um, Nigeria produces about 100,000 units per year. But we need to be producing seven times that at 700,000 units wow. per year. So out of those units, um, like I said, um, private developers who contribute largely to that um, un those units don't want to build affordable, they just want to make their money quickly. So they tend to build um, expensive accommodation, as I said, which is in prime locations for the upper class society. Now what, you ha what, you, what happened was we had an oversupply of, shall we just say, expensive property, yeah. and the purchasing power of the people was low. So affordable housing wasn't available, expensive um, housing was available, Sitting there. nobody mm -hmm. could afford it, vacancy rents went up, which is why the government is now trying to actually charge people for having um, vacant, property, vacant properties with no tenants, because in this uh, economic situation, we need all the housing that we can get. So to move forward, to be able to you know, solve this, we need to incentivize affordable housing for private developers. So there's numerous ways that you can do that. You can give them tax waivers, you can reduce land use charges, or actually when these things don't even work, you can enforce them to include affordable housing. We see this in the UK with the Section 106. Any developer who produces more than 20 units has to dedicate 20% of that to affordable housing. Wow. This is something that we could really consider. I mean, private, private developers don't shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to hear that. But this is something that we could actually profit from um, in Nigeria because of our increasing population. Um, as well as that, uh, with foreign direct investment, even though the economic indicators are on the rise, inflation is down, our reserve is growing, oil prices are stable, um, the Naira is stabilizing. However, employment rates are still low, which again yeah. reflects in the um, purchasing power of the people. And then with the 2019 elections on the, around the corner, a lot of foreign direct investment uh, is just going to slow down completely. So yeah, I was even going to tap in on that. What exactly are the negatives of foreign direct investments and what are the positives? So with foreign direct investment, um, I would say, I mean, the positives speak for themselves. Yeah. We need houses, people want to bring money and build these houses. Unfortunately, for the average Nigerian, if a foreign company comes in to deliver these houses, it's not going to be given to you at the value that it should be because they need to turn a profit. And then also, we don't want to lose this revenue to outside of Nigeria. So whatever we can keep in Nigeria, built by Nigerians, for Nigerians, lived in by Nigerians, that is always great for the economy. Um, Even with our 22 trillion Naira debts. <laughs> In fact, we actually took three hundred million, a uh, three hundred million uh, dollar loan from the World Bank to try and provide more um, housing accommodation, and the federal and state budget, I think, is thirty, off the top of my head, thirty five point four billion dollars. Wow. Which um, Fashola himself actually said is grossly inadequate. It's just not enough. We need the government to do more, and unfortunately what we've seen with past administrations is that even when they do start off with programs aimed at you know the middle class which is the largest demographic mm. in nigeria today and the fastest growing demographic today by the end of the project you find that the accommodation is not actually affordable wow. so we really 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 do need affordable housing to enter into the supply mm. otherwise we're just going to have an increased vacancy rate of overpriced property that no one can afford. Very true. And that leads me to my next question. If you could recommend three areas in Lagos, right, yes. that have affordable housing, that people can actually look towards if they're looking for affordable housing, where would you recommend? Okay, so obviously number one, anything along the Lekki Epe Expressway, that's a great area for investment. And I don't even know how I'm gonna say this. A bit better meta. I can't say. A bit meta. A bit meta. Yes, on the mainland yeah. is also it's forecasted actually for a lot of growth. And then also any area on the mainland that is close to the ferry system, which is okay. about to pick up around Apapa. Yeah, um, yeah, around or... the ferry system. Oh, that's more. Specific. That's on the mainland. So that's the other side. Okay, okay. okay. So basically, if you if you're close to transportation links, especially the ferry, which is about to 
really pick up because water transportation, I mean, our roads are completely congested. Yeah. So a lot of people that live on the mainland are, are slowly going to move to water transportation. So any area that is mm. close to a ferry terminal, is, the property value is going to increase. So that's, that's another brilliant. area that people should look into. That's brilliant. What about, let me think, what about an area like Ikeja? Is Ikeja, would you say it's just like another VI Ikoyi, like you phase one? In what sense? In the sense of not necessarily having affordable housing. No. Um, so one thing about um, property in the mainland is that it wasn't as affected by the recession as um, the island. The island was actually very negatively affected by the um, recession. But on the mainland, property prices actually steadily increased, not drastically, but they were healthy. The GDP growth um, on the mainland was healthy. So um, investing in areas like this is actually quite solid. Do you know what I mean? So long as your construction... And the construction of the building that you're moving into is, you know, adequate and safe because we have a lot of dilapidated buildings. You don't want to invest in a property that in 10, 20 years is going to start crumbling. I mean, you know, we have an increase yeah. in property collapses in Nigeria with over 60 percent of that coming from Lagos. Wow. So when you are looking to invest in these such areas, you need to make sure that you have someone check the property and make sure that the standard of construction is up to scratch, especially if you want to secure Brilliant. your investment. And who do, what kind of people do you go to to get that checked? So um, surveyors like myself, mm. um, lawyers to have airtight contracts, make sure that you want to see the plans of the building, general inspections. I mean, surveyors typically carry out the yeah. inspections, but it's just things that we can see ourselves. Cracks, uneven lines. I mean, that it. It's the most irritating thing We see thing it a ever. lot, and you <laughs> overlook it, but with, I mean, since 2012, we've had, like, over 60 building collapses. It's becoming more and more apparent, wow. and it's a real thing. It's a real issue. Wow. And because now we have this huge deficit, everyone's trying to build, but it's not just about building as much as you can. It's about mm. the quality of what you build, because, unfortunately, if you are building substandard quality, uh, substandard buildings, you're actually adding to the problem. Absolutely, absolutely. And last but not least, Joanna, before I ask you to share your information for people to contact you, what do you see for the future of real estate in Nigeria? Uh, well, I'm going to definitely be biased here <laughs> because I do work at Echo Atlantic. I have to 100% say that Echo Atlantic is the future for real estate in Nigeria. Even it's with the environmental problems? We don't actually have any environmental problems all of our information is on our website for anyone who wants to check that out in terms of the environmental implications of the project it's actually a huge land reclamation project but we are restoring land that was previously there the infrastructure is out of this world it's a smart city the views are breathtaking i mean you've been there yourself i mean yeah. you didn't really come to this side, but you've been there yourself yeah so in terms of the future of, of um nigerian real estate um apart from all the negative issues that we've discussed i think echo atlantic definitely is right up there at the top. Interesting, <laughs> interesting. Joanna, thank you so much thank for joining for me on Hello Nigeria. Me. It's been an absolute pleasure. And I think that since I started the show, this is the first time I'm covering real estate Ooh. and I've been wanting to. <laughs> so I am extremely, extremely like, I don't know, I feel very accomplished. To enjoy more of this, our Ugunke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.